Hi, this is Ruth. Uh, I wanted to run through a restorative uh, yoga class. Um, you might want to spend a little more time in certain of the asanas. So if your computer is near you and you can hit pause whenever you want to, feel free to linger longer um, in different areas um, and relaxation at the end, of course. So initially what I want to show you, I'm just going to go over to my mat, is um, some of the props that we use in a class and some ideas for what you can do at home to recreate something similar. So often in restorative yoga, we'll use a bolster. So if you have one of these at home, that's great. We're gonna be doing a supported reclined cobbler's pose. Um, if I had my bricks that we often use in class, I take a second highest setting, a lowest setting, set them up on an angle. In reclining cobbler's pose, we'll be laying ourselves across that bolster. You could create extra support and lift under your head with another cushion. And then it's really nice to support this area of the arm. So if you've got any throw pillows, you can wedge that right underneath the arm so the arm releases down on each side. Similarly, you want to ensure that you're supporting uh, your leg. You don't wanna be at maximum end of range. So again, another cushion, and particularly if you let it be folded in half, so it's a bit firmer and higher. And you're matching whatever you do on one side with the other side. And then the soles of the feet can be together. Again, a lift and a support under the head. depending on what you're using for your bolster. And you really want to feel as though everything is supported to enable you to release and relax into the pose. So how could we make one of these bolsters at home? This is the Blue Peter section. So I have a plate and using a bath towel or I've got a couple of bath mats because they're quite thick. And I use a couple of pillows. You could just as easily use some of the pillows I already had and wedge them in next to each other. You want the pillows to come into the middle you don't want them to be too soft, so uh, a cushion or whatever that's relatively firm. And then I simply wrapped them and rolled them. And then took another bath mat, or as I say, you can use towels. And then again, nested it over and rolled it again. Okay. So that's my substitute for that yoga bolster. If you don't have the purple bricks for the incline, a fellow yoga teacher was creatively using toilet rolls for all sorts of different things. So I had to go. And if you take one roll high up and then you take another on its side that's going to collapse and mush down a little bit, then you can create your incline. And again, I actually find this one, because it's a little lower in height than the yoga bolster, more comfortable for me. And the usual padding around. We're not going to need this until later in the class, but you wanna, might want to stop that video now and have that all ready to go for when we come to that portion of the class. I'll put my props away and get them out of the way. Oh, and the other thing to mention during the class, we might be in a low lunge position. And in our normal classes, I may cue students to use a setting of a brick that is appropriate for them. 
Again, you could use <laughs> a toilet roll to bridge that distance. Or you could even use, and I was showing this in another class, you could even use a little um, kitchen stool. So if I take that yoga brick, it's nearly the same height as that kitchen stool. It's got a little handle, relatively light. And if I'm lunging forward, I can just take that hand to there. So just get to look at your home in a new way <laughs> in terms of potential props that you can have available for your practice. We're going to start lying down on our back. So relax into a comfortable supine position. So the legs could be extended, or the soles of the feet could be to the floor. You might like to let the bent knees rest in towards each other. Soften the face, relax the jaw. Relax the shoulders, and let the body settle. Become aware of your breath. And be aware of how that breath is changing in your stillness. When you feel ready, take a smooth controlled inhale through the nose and a smooth lengthened relaxed exhale through the nose and then simply return to your spontaneous natural breath. So breathing in and out through the nose. Again, take that controlled, steady, comfortable, lengthened in-breath. And that steady, controlled, lengthened out-breath. Once more, allow the breath to be spontaneous. And notice whether that spontaneous breath is starting to change a little. And again, a controlled, comfortable inhale. And controlled, smooth exhale. Maybe it feels okay to continue with that controlled, lengthened in and out breath. Letting go of the control whenever you wish. Or you may find that you're settling into a steady, even, extended pace. Take 
your time to transition to an upright seat. You could roll to the side as you would normally exit your Shavasana, pausing briefly on the side. Again, awareness of that breath. Moving yourself upright. And you could take some support under your seat, a block if you have it, a cushion, maybe just a book. So coming onto that seat, legs could be extended, knees bent, cross-legged. Even kneeling is fine. We're gonna work with three-part breath with a simple hand mudra. But again, just allow that breath to settle into your comfortable, steady pace from this changed seated position. Relax and soften through the lips and the jaw. Notice your inhale and feel your exhale. With the next inhale, palms still face down, but they float away from the lap a few inches. And then as you exhale, the palms turn in to face each other. Palms stay facing in, but with the inhale, we open those arms wide. Arms stay wide as we exhale and palms face skyward. The inhale draws the arms up. Use your grounding to support the lift. And the exhale, palms face down and float all the way back to the lap. Again, inhale, hands float up. Exhale, palms face in. Inhale, arms open wide, palms in. Feel the rotation through shoulders as you exhale to rotate palms skyward. And then the whole of the arm rising skyward with that next inhale. And the exhale draws them all the way back down to the lap. Two more repetitions. Inhale, feel the belly fill. Exhale, feel it empty. Inhale, feel that the expansive ribs draws those arms wide. Feel the rib cage release, palms face skyward. Ground through sit bones, feel the expansiveness through the chest as arms lift. And feel the lungs empty, chest, ribs, belly. One more time. Inhale, aware of the lowest part of the lungs as they fill. And the lowest part of lungs as they empty. Filling the belly, filling through the rib cage, aware of the mid lungs as arms go wide. And emptying through mid lungs, low lungs, exhale. Filling belly, rib cage, chest through in breath. And exhale, empty the lungs from the top through the middle to the bottom. Steady inhale. And steady exhale. Let's transition to all fours for our cat position. Removing any blocks off of the mat. Find your tabletop position. Space the knees hip width. Hands under shoulders. Relax through the front of the body. And then as you inhale, tailbone, gaze gently reach away from each other. So the gaze tracks forward along the mat. And we gently stretch front of body. Exhale, tailbone tucks, chin tucks. We use our grounding to take that active stretch through the back of the body. Take that again, soften the pelvic floor, the belly and through front ribs as tailbone gently lifts and gaze lifts for in breath. And exhale, rounding through that back. Inhale again, we're with that cat dip front body stretch. This time as you exhale, neutral through the spine, pushing the hips back for your extended child. Rock forward to all fours for inhale. Relax the front of body. 
Again, neutral spine, pushing hips back for extended child pose. Each inhale, the same movement, cat dip, gentle front body stretch. This time as you exhale, an option to lift to downward dog or again, taking that extended child pose or the rounded back cat. Inhale, lowering to the knees. Exhale, rounded back cat. Inhale, cat dip, front body stretch. Extended child or downward dog with your next exhale. Inhale, cat dip, front body stretch, tops of feet to floor. Extended child pose. Inhale, back to cat dip. Round back or downward facing dog pose. Inhale, lowering to all fours. And then coming up to high knees, I'll turn to face towards your direction. Take a few gentle maypole swings from here. Let the arms be loose, relax through the neck, through the jaw. And then slow that movement down. Lateral bends from here. So working with your right arm, gazing to that right arm as it rises up, or arms can stay to the side. We're going to move into that lateral bend, stretching through that right side of the waist. Inhale, coming up. We're going to stay with the same side. Pin that right shin bone down. Pelvic floor engaged for stability. Inhale, coming out of that stretch through the side. And final time, feel how the left side of the waist contracts as we stretch through the right, be heavy and grounded through that right shin. Coming upright with inhale and release the arm with exhale. Left arm rises with inhale, space and shoulder joint. Exhale into that side bend. Be grounded through that left side. Inhale, upright. And two more times. Exhale takes you into that side bend. Inhale to vertical. And one more time. Grounded stability through the pelvis. Rise with inhale. And release that arm down. Sitting to the backs of the heels. From here, we can do a simple twist. Again, you could pad under the tops of the feet, underneath sit bones, or you could even take it from high kneeling. So inhale, lengthening, and then exhale to your right side, taking a gentle twist, wrapping the arms, tuck the chin, gaze into the twist. We can reach those arms skyward on inhale, softy, and then exhale, twisting the other way. Inhale, upright. Exhale, twist. Inhale, lift. And exhale, twist. Inhale, rise to high knees on lifting. Take the hands to that sacrum space, low back. Slide shoulder blades down, draw them in. And then firming up through the pelvis, we can lift through that heart space. Extension through the back. Exhale to neutral. And take that one more time as we inhale. And exhale, sitting to the back of the heels. Take an in-breath here. And take an out-breath. We're going to work releasing our shoulders. Again, I'll just turn to face in towards you. Again, you could be seated, you could be kneeling. You could even be standing for this if you wish. I'm going to come up to high knees so there's a bit of space for my arms. So from high knees, we've got the arms released to the sides. So take an inhale and draw those shoulders high up towards the ears. It doesn't feel great. Take some fists to even firm up even more and then slowly start to shake that head backwards and forwards for that no. <laughs> so hugging those shoulders up high, a gentle very little turn of the head from side to side. Just a tiny little movement. 
So fists, shoulders up high. It doesn't feel very nice, as long as it doesn't feel painful. And then release those shoulders down. Again, it's your practice, so make sure there's no issues with that neck, with your shoulders. That would mean it's not a wise move for you. Taking fists again, taking those shoulders up high. This time the right ear moves over towards right shoulder. Imagine you've got an itch on that ear and start to let that slide a little backward and a little forward. Check the opposite shoulder hasn't slipped down, both shoulders high up. And then stop the movement with the head to center and release those arms down. Let the fingertips relax. Pause here and just notice how the shoulders feel. Where it feels they're sitting to how they usually sit. Allow the sense of heavy arms. Taking this again, let's lift those shoulders up high. Left ear moving over towards that left shoulder. Right shoulder stays lifted too. And then that gentle movement through the head, allowing that ear to rub along the shoulder. Slow that movement down, stop the movement, shoulders high as head comes to level, and release. Again, pause, a few breaths there. Just notice how that feels. Final time, fists together, lifting up left and right, holding within that lift. Can you lift a little higher? And let it go. Come back to that steady breath in and out of the nose. And just be aware of sensation through the neck, through the shoulders, down the arms. We're coming back into tabletop position. All fours. Right hand under shoulder as you inhale. Float the left arm out to the side. Open the arm as you rotate through the torso. And as you exhale, thread that arm underneath and through. Inhale, opening out. As you thread the left arm through, the right elbow can bend so that left shoulder starts to touch towards the floor. And then as you inhale, opening to that left side. And exhale, guide that shoulder down towards the floor. Inhale, opening back up. And then this time as you guide that shoulder down towards the floor, see if you can find that support of the floor for the whole of the arm and the shoulder. As you rest the head, check you're not kicking through the neck. So roll the head above that left ear space to keep the neck long and neutral. And then rest down into that shoulder, taking a gentle shoulder stretch, again, as long as it feels okay. And just one more breath there. And then as you rise up, that left hand releases, and we'll take it to the other side. So right arm out to the side, open into that right side. And then as you exhale, keep the left arm straight for the first time and reach away. Pushing through left hand as we open to that right side. This time as you thread through, let that left elbow soften and bend so that right arm shoulder connects more fully to the floor. Opening out. And threading through, allowing that shoulder to come down towards the floor. Final time, opening. And then this time, as you thread that arm through, allow the shoulder to come down, allow the side of the head to come down. Roll the weight above that right ear. Try and keep that neck in neutral. And find that position, that distance between knees and shoulders that allow the shoulder access to the floor. And check in with your breath here. Just one more breath here. That grounded left hand used to push down as you inhale, rising back up again. And then from here, we are going to lunge and step our left foot forward. Decide how much distance you want, but 
between that front heel and back knee to give the stretch through to the hip flexor. Right hand grounds down under shoulder to the floor or any lift and support you wish to use. This is where you could use a toilet roll to bridge that distance if you wish or anything else that's a firm, stable surface. So as you inhale, open to that left side, stacking those arms. As you exhale, reach forward and down to the floor. Inhale, gliding behind and up. So it's as though the arm is fake painting the face of that clock. So exhale forward and down. Inhale back and up. And one more time, reaching forward and down out of the twist and inhale takes you back and up into the twist. Release the hand to the inside of the front foot. Walk that left foot further out. Hands to the floor or maybe you're up on fingertips. Breathe, lift and length along the spine. And then as you exhale, guide that left knee out to the side. That action comes from that left hip joint. So we roll towards outside edge of foot. Inhale, you can land the foot, knee lifting. Two more breaths. You could stay in that or work dynamically. Smooth inhale. And smooth exhale. Slow, steady breath as you inhale and comfortable, smooth exhale. Inhale, knee lifts, foot gets guided back in line with hip, left hand back to outside of left foot. Lengthen through spine here. And then as you exhale, push through that front foot. We want vertical shin bone on the back leg. Front foot start to lift the toe line, contracting front of thigh to straighten out through that leg. I like to tuck the back toes. It gives a little bit of per more purchase and stability I find through the pose. Decide how you like it. And then lengthening through the torso, already that lengthening, you might feel that hamstring being stretched a little more. So see if it seems beneficial to hinge a little more deeply from hip to extend the stretch at the back of the leg. That's the purpose. If where you're upright is already giving you an effective stretch, not strain, then stay there. Otherwise, two more breaths, just exploring that contracting quads at the front of the thigh, toe line lifted, steady breath, length through the neck, soft through the shoulders. And take your final exhale there. Inhale, lifting torso. Guiding the hands a little further forward, pull that front foot back and reach that foot back. Take wide knees, rest the forearms, rest the forehead. A couple of breaths there in extended child. Again, just notice sensation through that left side compared to right. And then coming to all fours, we'll take it to the other side. I'll just turn so that you've got that view of the outer foot and take this sweater off. Finally warming up. So that right foot now is lunging forward again, beside that distance for the hip stretch or flex, uh, um, hip str flexor stretch. <laughs> and then we have that left hand underneath shoulder providing any support underneath it that's beneficial. As you inhale, open to that right side, hold knee over ankle. As you exhale, fingertips reach forward down to the floor, chest faces down. As the hands move back, feel how you rotate into the twist and move skyward. And exhale, forward and down. Inhale, moving back and up. Exhale, forward and down. Final sweeping back and up. As that hand comes forward and down, it comes inside of that right foot. We creep the right foot further out. Maybe the toes angle the little slightly out. As you lengthen up through the spine, hands maybe come forward onto fingertips. Exhale, guiding that knee open to the side, your comfortable range of movement. Inhale, knee lifts, sole of foot plants back down. Two more breaths. You can stay with that dynamic movement or you could just work with that hip opener. 
your movement. Notice how it feels for you. No force, no strain. Coming to the final exhale there. Lengthening up through that torso, landing solo foot, guiding the foot back in line with hip, right hand outside of the foot. Lengthening up, we drive the hips back to bring that vertical shin bone, option to tuck back toes. And then as we reach that front foot forward, we lift the toe line, contracting front of thigh. Take the inhale energy all the way up that spine, engage there and feel that extra stretch you get from that action. Hug front of thigh. And then three breaths, working the pose. Softening through the face, relaxing the jaw. Slow, smooth, steady breaths give you more time in the pose. Coming to that final exhale. And then lifting further upright, drawing the foot in, landing the foot, and then coming back. Again, knees are wide, allow the sinks to hip, hips to sink, <laughs> rest the forearms, and rest the forehead. So staying in that extended child pose. And then lifting yourself up. We're going to take a hip flexor stretch. So if you have a block, you could place it behind you. You may not need a lift. If you can tip back in those hands, find the floor comfortably. Otherwise, to provide a little bit of a lift can be beneficial. A firm surface behind you, the floor or that firm lift. And then as you inhale, engaging through the buttocks, opening through the heart. And then as you really contract through those glutes, you can feel the stretch through the front of hips. Exhale, releasing down. Two more breaths, the lift through inhale. Option to stay lifted or to lower through exhale. And one more time. And then coming upright, release any supports. Lie on your front, forearms are grounded. Maybe the elbow line is further forward of the shoulders. Allow the lowest floating ribs to rest to the floor. Take the front of thighs and let them roll slightly in towards midline, keeping the legs, the feet hip distance apart from each other. Relax the jaw. Dip the chin slightly, but lengthen through the back of the neck. Relax the shoulders down the back. Steady inhale. And steady exhale. Inhale, draw length up the front of the rib cage, up the sternum, chest and gaze, face forward. And then as you exhale, start to reach the front ribs away from the floor as you tuck the chin. Press through the front of the pelvis, the pubic bone. Inhale, feel the front of the pelvis, lowest ribs connect as we lengthen through the spine, shoulder blades glide down. Stay lifted here, but gaze over your right shoulder, chin tucked, jaw relaxed. Inhale, come back to chest facing forward. Feel you're dragging the energy of forearms back to the hips. And then as you exhale to the left side, feel that that left elbow is pulling towards left hip, but the right fingertips forearm is drawing away from right hip towards the front of the mat. Inhale takes you forward, chest opening up. Exhale, feel how the action through the shoulders, the forearms is in opposite directions. Inhale to center. Once more to each side, take the shoulder line off center, firm up the legs as you gaze round to the foot. Coming to that center position through in-breath, lifting through heart, and then exhale into that movement to the side. Coming back to center. Once more to each side, take your time when you finish the movements. Then you can take elbows wide and rest the head. Take your time to finish working. 
And then allowing those elbows to come wide when you're done, stacking the hands, resting the forehead. And once you come down there, relax the thighs, soften the belly, relax the pelvic floor. So stay there for two more resting breaths. And then placing hands under shoulder line, maybe a little lower, push yourself up, move upright to a seated position. And we now want to get ourselves set up for that um, bolster arrangement that I showed you at the start of class. So I'm going to go ahead and use my makeshift props, my toilet roll, <laughs> and my homemade bolster. So we have those two in place. I've got my roll of nested cushions. So once I get you set up in this, I'll be coming out of the pose and just talking to you to camera, but you stay relaxed in that pose, so long as you're comfortable. So if I'm holding you in it longer than you want to be in it, you can always come out, come to a seated position or any other position. You could come back to how we started in that semi-supine or supine position. So I've got my cushions ready for the back of the shoulders and the arms. And I've got my other two cushions ready for rolling up for that outer thigh space. I think that's all I need. <laughs> so I'm right up against that back of the pelvis against the end of my makeshift bolster. I'm going to do the legs first, get those set up. If you settle into it and after a minute or so, something's niggling and you're just noticing it feels a little different one side versus the other, it's worth taking a bit of time to just fix that. And then at some point, you just need to be able to settle. So I've got those legs. That feels pretty good where that is. Now I can rest my back, rest my head. And then I'm just going to wedge those underneath. So the whole of the shoulder and the upper arm have support. In these restorative poses, you want to create a solid base of support for all of the parts of the body. So there is that ability to fully release, relax and let go. So it is worth investing a bit of time. So I've just decided I want to take my feet a little further out away and that feels a, a little bit nicer. So keep scanning through, notice how things feel. Check that there's no part of you that still feels it needs to support itself. And when you feel held by your props, your supports beneath you, allow yourself to release. And you can always pause and stop the recording to give yourself more time to get set up. As you settle, let the weight of the head sink. Feel that smooth skin across forehead. 
soften around the eyes. Weight of the head sink. Feel temples relax and release. Relax the jaw, the shoulders, the arms. Release the back. Soften through the hips. Feel the connection of the soles of the feet together. Come back to awareness of your breath. And bring some equal length to in and out breath. Keeping it comfortable. And relaxed. And just notice what that comfortable, sustainable length of that breath is. Maybe it feels okay to let it be a little longer. Become aware of that pause between breath direction. So at the end of your next inhale, just notice that suspension of breath before the exhale then begins. And at the end of exhale, notice the brief pause. And then the inhale arises. Feel that the pause between breath direction is a silence that you can rest yourself in. Where everything stops. Allow yourself to linger in the pause, and maybe that pause becomes longer. So working with up to half the length of your breath for the pauses between breath direction. Without force and strain, just making that an exploration. And imagine that you are lying in an oval of energy. The oval has two halves, right and left. The top of the oval sits above the head and the bottom of it sits below the feet. Stay with your breath pattern. But next time you inhale, imagine that you are moving energy up that right curve of the oval. Use the breath pause to linger at the top of that oval above the head. And your slow, steady exhale draws down the left curve of the oval to arrive below the feet and pause. Your inhale moves energy up that right curve of the oval. The pause hovers that energy above the crown of the head. Can you feel it? The exhale draws it down that left curve to be held and suspended below the feet. Continue to move that energy along that oval up the right side, hovering it above the head. Exhale, draw it down the left side, hovering below feet.
Continue to use your breath and your pauses to move and suspend that energy along that oval that surrounds you. And imagine that oval of energy that you sit within to be a nourishing, supportive, and protective energy field. And in this practice, you are sustaining, repairing, maintaining that energetic field. Continue to use the breath to move along and suspend energy. But allow that oval to shrink down in size now. So the top of it sits in line with eyebrow center deep within the head, that sixth energy center, Agya Chakra. And the base of it now is at the base of the spine, our root energy chakra, Muladhara. So you continue to move energy along that oval. Moving it up the right side. Pause at eyebrow center, Agya Chakra. Exhale down that left curve to hold that energy at your root base chakra of support, stability, and security. Feel how you move through those energy centers. Your root chakra, your sacral area, solar plexus, heart, throat, and back to that eyebrow center, center of knowledge and wisdom, tapping into your inner guide, your intuition, balancing energy within the body, bringing a sense of harmony, clarity, so when we act, we know what right action is, there's no doubt, there's no hesitation. supported by our inner guide, our inner wisdom. So the mind stays free, serene, and calm, regardless of what may be going on in our lives and around us. Whenever you feel depleted, give yourself this time to repair and renew your energy field, to reconnect with your supports, your stability, your wisdom. Feel that oval of energy start to dissolve 
and fill within you. It's around you and through you, part of the fabric of your being. Take some small movements through the hands. Let the breath become gradually fuller and deeper for that reawakening. You may wish to take an easy stretch through the arms and then support lifting those knees up away from your supports. You can move those supports of the legs out to the side. Ease yourself onto your side. So on that incline prop, just turn to the side, let the eyes open as you might exit your Shavasana. Again, you can remove any of those arm props. And then slowly lift yourself up. You have some choices here. You might want to take a few breaths and straddle your support. For my low support, I think a cushion is going to be nice. Into a supported child pose. Check that you can fill in the space. You've got all those supports to hand. So filling in, maybe making a bigger height of your prop so that the whole of the front body can sink down into the support beneath it. For Balasana, child pose supported. Just a few breaths here to allow the back muscles to release and find some space, harnessing gravity. Relax the shoulders, so maybe the arms come a little further forward or further out to the side. Find where they can find rest. And breathe into that back of the body now. You could stay here a little longer if you wish, pausing the recording. And when you're ready, find a comfortable seat for Nadi Shodhana alternate nostril breathing. You may choose to do a little bit of loosening movements before you settle into your seat. So for me, I'm going to take a couple of cat cow. You may choose to do something else instead. So make it your own practice. I'm not going to gently circle through my hips since they've been in stillness for a while. And I'm changing that direction. But time for you to be intuitive with your practice. When you're ready, find a seat preparing for Nadi Shodhana. So settling back into your steady, smooth, lengthened in and out breath. I'll show you the hand mudra. So Vishnu mudra, right hand, first two fingers into palm. Last two fingers are used to close off left nostril and the thumb is used to close off the right. And it's a very gentle gliding down to the notch in the side of the nostril to close the air off. But for the moment, rest the hands in the lap as you settle into that steady, comfortable, even paced in and out breath. We're going to be taking two rounds of Nadi Shodhana with three resting breaths between. And each round is six breaths. So we exhale, inhale each side. So there'll be three breaths each nostril. 
Relax the jaw. Steady your gaze or eyes closed. Feel that upright posture, space for breath. Take that Vishnu Mudra, right hand, first two fingers into palm. Approach the nostrils as you breathe in through both. And then the thumb glides down that right side to close the right as you exhale left. Inhale back up that left side. Release the thumb. Last two fingers slide gently down to close off that left as you exhale right. Inhale back up that same right side to finish breath two. Swap over, thumb closes right to exhale down left. Inhale back up left side for breath three. Swap over, exhale down right. Inhale back up right side for breath four. Swapping over, exhale, down left. And inhale, breath five. Final time, we exhale, down right. Inhale, up that right side for breath six. And rests in the lap. You can release the mudra momentarily. Maybe chi mudra, thumb, and first finger joined. As we take those three slow, steady breaths, breathing through both nostrils, be aware of how it feels through left and right. Final breath there. Vishnu mudra, first two fingers in. We inhale, hands approach. This time the last two fingers close over the left as we exhale down right. Inhale back up that right side for breath one. Swapping over thumb closes right to exhale down left. Inhale back up that left side for breath two. And four more breaths, swapping over at the end of the inhale. Exhale, and then inhale. Swap at the end of the inhale. Working from one side to the other. Six breaths in total, or three to each side. And breath six finishes with that exhale down the left side. And that same side inhale back up left to finish your sixth breath when you're ready. And then once more the mudra releases, the hands rest to the lap. And you take those resting breaths noticing the air through both nostrils. Relax the jaw, soften the features of the face. Feel the ground that supports that upright spine. Space for breath. When you finish the three breaths, the palms meet at heart space. Gazing ahead. Scan through, just check and notice how you feel, how your energy feels. Body and mind and breath. Thank you for your practice today. I hope it feels it was beneficial for you. Namaste.